Welcome to the explainer. So you're setting up a Proxmox server, and right out of the gate, you hit this massive fork in the road. It's the big file system question. Do you stick with the simple, reliable EX4, or do you go all in on the powerful, feature-packed ZFS? Believe me, this one choice can really shape your whole experience, so let's break down which one is actually right for you. Okay, let's just dive right in. On paper, ZFS looks like an absolute monster, right? It's got self-healing, it's got compression, snapshots, replication, the works. But it also has this reputation for being a total memory hog. And maybe, just maybe, a little overkill for a simple home lab. So the real question is, are all those fancy features actually worth the overhead for your setup? Alright, first up, let's talk about the reigning champ, X4. It's the default for a reason, you know? And for a whole lot of people, it's pretty much everything they need with none of the headaches. So why do so many people just stick with X4? It's dead simple, it's fast, and it is completely predictable. It's the definition of it just works. There's basically zero learning curve, and it's not going to wake up one day and decide to eat half your system's RAM for breakfast. A really common setup you'll see is X4 paired with a hardware RAID card. It's a classic set it and forget it solution that's super easy to get running. But, and this is a huge but, there's a catch. If that physical RAID controller dies, getting your data back can be a nightmare. All of a sudden, that simplicity becomes its biggest weakness, a single catastrophic point of failure. Now let's step over to the other side of the ring and look at ZFS. And it's so important to get this straight from the start. ZFS is not just a file system. No way. It's a full-blown storage management platform, all rolled into one. And this is where you start to see that ZFS is a totally different animal. We're talking built-in software RAID, so you don't need that fragile hardware card. You get instant snapshots for painless rollbacks. It constantly checks your data for corruption to prevent bit rot. It even compresses your data on the fly to save space. I mean, for anyone who actually cares about their data, this feature list is a total game changer. But you know what they say, with great power comes a great appetite. And what's funny is, it's not really an appetite for your CPU. Even older processors handle ZFS just fine. Nope. The one big thing you absolutely have to plan for is memory. RAM. And the reason for that is something called the Adaptive Replacement Cache, or ARC. The easiest way to think about it is like ZFS's own private, super fast memory cache for everything it does. It uses your system RAM to make disk access way, way faster, but the keyword here is aggressive. By default, it can get pretty greedy with how much RAM it grabs for itself. You know, to really understand why ZFS has this reputation, you gotta look back a little. In older versions of Proxmox, the ARC could, by default, just straight up claim up to half of your entire system's RAM. Can you imagine? Now, thankfully, newer versions are way smarter about this, but it's still something you need to be aware of and probably tune yourself just to make sure your actual VMs have enough memory to breathe. Okay, so theory and features are one thing, right? But that doesn't tell the whole story. Let's see how this stuff actually performs when the rubber hits the road. Let's look at a really simple test a user did. It's a perfect head-to-head -head comparison, backing up a 200 gigabyte virtual machine on the exact same hardware, once using ZFS, and then again using EXT4. Wow, and the results are just night and day. Take a look at the IO delay. That's basically how long your system is just sitting around, waiting for the disk to do something. ZFS caused a massive 75% delay. It was basically choking the storage while the backup was running. Meanwhile, X4 handled the same job with a delay of just 17%. The whole system was just way more responsive. So what did that huge I.O. delay actually mean for the backup time? Well, the ZFS backup took over 30 minutes to finish. The X4 backup, on the exact same hardware, was done in under 13 minutes. That is more than twice as fast. It's a pretty clear sign that on a simple single disk setup, all those amazing ZFS features come with some real performance overhead. So all this performance data brings us to the big one, the most important question of all. Which one should you actually use for your setup? You know, a really smart way to think about this is to ask a slightly different question. Do you really need all the power and complexity of ZFS on the drive that just runs the Proxmox operating system itself? This is where a lot of people find a perfect compromise. And here it is, the best of both worlds strategy that so many people swear by. For your host OS drive, you put Proxmox on a small, cheap SSD formatted with X4. 
It's fast, simple, and if it ever breaks, reinstalling Proxmox is easy. Then, for your actual VM and data storage, you use a separate set of drives to create a ZFS pool. This way, you get all those powerhouse features like snapshots and data protection exactly where you need them the most, on your actual, irreplaceable data. This table really just boils it all down, doesn't it? For that main Proxmox OS drive, ext 4 is just clean, simple, and fast. But when you're talking about storing your actual VMs, especially across multiple disks, ZFS is the undeniable winner for data safety and management. The choice really depends on your hardware and what you value more, lean and simple or powerful and safe. So is ZFS worth it? Absolutely, if you actually need its enterprise level power. This quote just says it all perfectly. If you're going with ZFS, just make sure you bring extra RAM and a bit of patience. The real question isn't just X4 versus ZFS. It's about what you can't afford to lose, a little bit of performance or all of your critical data.